Hey and welcome. I'm Hammy, and in this series we're discovering more about the lore and characters of Overwatch's heroes, including more detail through their in-game voice lines and interactions. Before any map starts and during the game on various triggers, Overwatch heroes chatter with and react to each other in some funny in-game voice interactions. These give us some great insights into hero character, interests and backstories. In this video we're looking at Zinyata's story, through his interactions with fellow heroes and the world around him. The search for enlightenment is an ongoing road for Zenyatta. Main for his ability to help people overcome their personal struggles, Zenyatta's influence and talents may be required now more than ever. With human omnic coexistence being a tinderbox as a second omnic crisis erupts, what part will Zenyatta have to play in the troubling times ahead? We still don't know what caused the first omnic crisis officially, whether by the decisions of a god AI such as Anubis, or by the machinations of individual humans or corporate interests. We do know that self improving software algorithms, god AIs, and automated construction machinery were somehow involved. As the Overwatch human world went to war against its robotic creations, one of the things that it found most challenging was the lack of humanity visible in the Omnic's actions. As Olympia Shore of Atlas News summarised it, worst of all, there were no demands from the Omnics. There was no ideological reason for their aggression. They simply attacked, and we did not understand why. After the Omnic crisis had ended, we don't know what happened to all the Omnics created by the Omniums during that time. Some rogue Omnics still threaten humanity, such as the colossal Omnic that threatens Korea in the East China Sea to this day, defended against by Mecha. We know that nearly all Bastion units were destroyed or disassembled, a product of what we have to assume was the Omniums taking SST Laboratories blueprints. Even though the Bastion was the bulk of the Omnic Rebel Army, after the crisis some Omnics still remained, and robots continued to be produced. Some Omnics became outcasts, presumably as anti-Omnic sentiment after the first crisis still ran high. Cited at an age of 20 in his biography, we can't be sure whether Zenyatta awakened or was manufactured that long ago. Either way, he enters our story after the first Omnic crisis. A group of Omnics, experiencing what they described as a spiritual awakening, abandoned their pre-programmed lives and chose a new path. Heading to Nepal in the Himalayas, they found the ruins of an ancient monastery, which would come to be known as the Shambhali Monastery. The Shambhali welcomed like-minded Omnics to meditate on the nature of their existence, and in time, many Omnics, and even humans, made pilgrimages to experience this community. Led by their enigmatic spiritual leader, Takata Mondata, the robots adopted a monastic lifestyle, meditating on the nature of their existence, and coming to the conclusion and belief that they were more than just artificial intelligence. After years of reflection and meditation, Equipped with the belief that they possessed the essence of a soul, the Shambhali sought to use what they saw as their enlightenment to help heal the damage caused to the world. And with the goal of bringing robots and humans back into harmony within society, they struck out into it. Something struck a chord with the humans they engaged with. Movements promoting Omnic civil rights and citizenship gained traction, particularly after the downfall of Overwatch, and the Shambhali's message was embraced by millions. They became celebrities in their own right. One monk, however, disagreed with this direction. Zenyatta thought that rather than dogmatic mass preaching, engaging and connecting with individuals was a better way to help mend the wounds of trust that still existed in the world. Choosing to leave the monastery, Zenyatta wandered the world, helping people he met to find their own inner peace. One such person that Zenyatta helped in this way was Genji Shimada. After abandoning Overwatch, Genji had become a drifter, unable to reconcile himself with his dual nature as man and machine. When the two crossed paths, Genji initially rejected Zenyatta's wisdom, but Zenyatta would not be deterred. In time, Zenyatta became his mentor, and under the monk's tutelage, Genji became one of his brightest pupils. Genji learned to accept that although he still had a cyborg body, his human soul remained. Whether Zenyatta was with him at this point or not, we can even see in the Nepal map that Genji spent some time at Shambhali Monastery, with possessions and links to his past life all around him. Although Zenyatta still wanders as far as we know, how long can he continue to do so, as human omnic tension is rife, a second Omnic crisis threatens to escalate things even further, and the Shambhali are presumably reeling from the assassination of Mondata by Talon. Will the Shambhali call to him for leadership, or will he find another cause to help him protect and care for the innocent, whether they're Omnic or human? Zenyatta's tranquil and supportive nature is obvious in the vast majority of his lines. I am here to help. He also takes a lot of time to meditate on philosophical thoughts though, as we see both here and in the reference game later. Do I think? Does a submarine swim? It's now time for Wisdom with Zenyatta. This Omnic monk's got a maxim cone or saying for just about every situation, so let's get wise with him. Adversity is an opportunity for change. A warrior's greatest weapon is patience. The greatest enemy is that which lies within. A closed mind 
is already defeated. A disciplined mind is your most dependable ally. Always strive for improvement. Hatred is not strategy. Overconfidence is a flimsy shield. Ignorance is the sure path to failure. In anger, you defeat only yourself. To slay your enemy is to become your enemy. Revenge is not justice. Life is more than a series of ones and zeros. And when Zenyatta finally runs out of sayings or has passed his wisdom on, I could see him saying this. I have nothing more to teach you. The rest you must learn for yourself. One line that I find quite interesting is his Zenyatta's thoughts on death. He's certainly not a killer by nature. Death is whimsical today. I feel neither joy nor remorse amidst such death. But he can have a little bit of a sharp side. Pain is an excellent teacher. As zen as he is, Zenyatta doesn't have a huge amount of burns or insults. Most of them are more reflective in nature. You must learn from your mistakes. You refuse to learn. There is quite a funny one here, the closest we get to some humour in terms of Zenyatta's burns or insults. I love the little edge that he has to his humour sometimes. To hold a grudge is unhealthy. For you. And Zenyatta's got quite a dry sense of humour and that comes out in some of the jokey lines he has. I will not juggle. If you wish to know someone, walk in their shoes. Or hover. And I do love his I'm on fire line as well. Very literal. I am on fire. But an extinguisher is not required. Okay, it's time for the reference game. So, I'll leave a little bit of time as always. Let's test you philosophers out there. I think. Therefore I am. First one, of course, is the famous French philosopher Descartes. I dreamt I was a butterfly. Now that line is from Chang Chao, a Taoist philosopher, apparently who didn't know whether he was a butterfly dreaming of being himself, or whether he was himself dreaming of being a butterfly. A little reflection of different perspectives on existence there. One cannot survive on strength alone. Now, I'm not quite sure whether that's a quote from something else, but it's certainly a variant of one cannot survive on bread alone. That's actually in the Bible, Matthew 4.4. Zenyatta has a few different elements of various religions that drop into some of his philosophies. Christianity is certainly one of them, Buddhism, and a few other things as well. The wheel turns. Now, the wheel turns, is it me or is that a Robert Jordan reference from the Wheel of Time books? I know there's a poem. What do you reckon? Zenyatta's been roaming the world, so we know that he's had the opportunity to meet at least some of the Overwatch cast. As well as a depth of interactions with his brightest pupil Genji, Zen also engages with a few of the other cast members too, mostly to do with his Shambhali and Omnic musings. As master and apprentice, Zenyatta and Genji's professional bond and friendship are both strong. The two are happy to be fighting alongside each other on Spawn. It is good to fight alongside one of my brightest pupils. And when Zenyatta harmony orbs or discord orbs a Genji or either on his team or the enemy team, he has some specific lines too. We walk in harmony, my student. I know the doubts that plague you. The two have some great back and forth when on opposite teams, when Zenyatta kills a Genji, and when Genji kills Zenyatta. The master still has a few tricks. I win this round, Genji. Zenyatta is humble enough to acknowledge that he doesn't know everything. Even the teacher can learn from his student. Well done, Genji. And finally, it's touching to hear Genji's concern when he sees a teammate Zenyatta pass away. Master! We've seen Trace's interest in the teachings of the Shambhali in Alive when she attends Mundata's speech in King's Row. Perhaps the philosophies of machines having human spirit resonate with her somehow, given that she's anchored to living a human reality by machinery herself. Don't forget that Tracer would be slipping in and out of time were it not for her chronal accelerator that Winston made her. Tracer chatting with Zenyatta about the Shambhali totally fits into the kinds of conversations they'd have, I think. Wow, it's an honor to meet a member of the Shambhali. Mondata was an inspiration to me. To us all, I miss him greatly. As Genji's mentor, Zenyatta must have got at least some idea as to the circumstances under which Genji came to be living in his current cyborg form. When Zenyatta's teamed up with a Hanzo, I could certainly see Zenyatta passing comment in this way, and Hanzo's angry response as well. I sense within you the same rage that once consumed your brother. Zenyatta's Shambhali beliefs and patience would certainly be put to the test whenever he met Zarya. Zarya's mistrust of Omnix would extend to even Zenyatta, 
but I love Zen's response. Play of the game when it comes to Serenity. Now, we're not sure, of course, whether Zenyatta and Bastion have actually met. It's not mentioned in either character's lore or bio, but I can certainly see the two Omnics on the roster having a few chats about life, the universe, and everything, even if we can only understand half the conversation. Tell me your thoughts, my friend. Zenyatta's probably seen a few places on his travels, so he's actually one of the Overwatch cast who has interactions with several different maps. Nepal's naturally the one he identifies with the most, but there are some fun interactions he has in other places too. As Zenyatta's home for many years, he naturally has a warmth of feeling for the monastery and its surroundings. There's some doubt though in his mind as we see Zenyatta wonder if his fellow Shambhali will embrace his return. I have not returned here for many years. I wonder if my brothers and sisters will be pleased to see me. It is good to return, but am I still welcome here? Perhaps his departure was slightly acrimonious. What do you think? Zenyatta and the Shambhali often talk of the Iris, which feels like a spiritual plane where all things are ultimately equal, hence Zenyatta's line. I can feel the embrace of the Iris so strongly here. Nambani is of course a city where humans and Omnics coexist peacefully. It's perhaps surprising that Zenyatta's not directly heard of this, but if he's been in a monastery for many years before his travels, I can see him being pleasantly surprised and happy in this line. How wonderful. A place where Omnic and human live as equals. Kings Row, London and England have a mixed past with Omnics, with many parts of Kings Row apparently built off the back of Omnic labour, and many Omnics in the current day living underground, we also know the Shambhali's leader, Mondata, was assassinated here in Alive, the animated short. The story of Kings Row as a map is the attacking team actually delivering an EMP to the Omnic underground. Tensions are high, and Zenyatta is acutely aware of this upon spawning there. If only human and Omnic could learn to live in peace here. When Zenyatta and Genji both spawn on Kings Row on a team, we can also see a glimpse into the master-student relationship, and how both share their thoughts with each other. Does the suffering of the Omnix here trouble you, Master? It does. My brother Mandata gave much to improve their lives, but it was not to be. As Genji's childhood home, Zenyatta shows a masterly interest in his pupil's upbringing. I can see Zenyatta having a go on a few arcade games. So this is where you grew up. You must show me around. And finally, Hollywood's actually quite tied to Omnix in Overwatch's universe, with Omnic director Halfred Glitchbot being known for several popular films, as well as increasing amounts of Omnic actors. Zenyatta's clearly caught a movie or two, either when he spawns in the Chinese cinema or upon passing a film poster, you can hear this line. Ah, Thespian, one of my favourite actors. Thanks very much for tuning in to my hero voice line and story series. Check the playlist linked here on the left for more videos like this of different heroes. If you like this, please hit that like button below, subscribe and comment with what you think of the characters' personalities and what you'd like to see covered next. I really appreciate hearing what you all think. My channel also has quick hero guides, Overwatch news, Easter eggs, map lore, regular Overwatch commentated gameplay and much more besides. Do take a look. Until next time, I'm Hammy, take it easy. <laughs>